Welcome to chapter 10 for stress management. This is the spirituality chapter, so here we go. So spirituality is at heart of stress management. People with a deep sense of spirituality have a purpose, sense of meaning in life, and a broader perspective. They're not defeated by crisis, and spirituality helps buffer stress. So the ways that this works is, you know, if you believe that, you know, like you believe that there's nothing, you know, that, that somehow you're here by accident, as soon as you die, that's it, and there, there's no spiritual component, you, you know, we all go through good things, we all go through bad things, but when you're going through good things, you just feel it's by chance. When you're going through bad things, you feel it's by chance. And sometimes a lot of times you might feel like, well, why do I even have to go through this? What's the point? Right. But when you have a sense of purpose and meaning, you know that you grow during those times. You may feel that you're, you know, like if you have a, a God or a deity that, that is in charge of things, if that's part of your spirituality, that they're placing you in things to either for you there to be there to help others or for it to help you, you know, somebody else to help you or to help you mature or grow or learn, right? So you have this broader perspective, right? So when you're going through a crisis, you feel that, you know, there's a, a plan and a purpose for you to be in that crisis at that time, which then again helps to um, take some of the stress out of being in that crisis. Um, so spirituality in America, large majority of Americans, nearly 78% say they believe in God. Um, now again, how, how their views of that may differ. Um, so, um, but they do believe that there's a deity that, um, that is that has created them and placed them to be on earth right and, and to have a, a plan and purpose 15% um, say they don't believe in God but do believe in a higher power so again they see that there's probably a purpose for them being there um, and today's college students have a high level of spiritual interest and involvement. So again, everybody's searching for their, their place, right? And, and why they're here and what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, spiritual quest, Americans are looking for answers and seek guidance on human spirituality, right? So that's, you know, uh, you know whether that is reading books, talking to preachers, pastors, parents, older siblings, friends, you know, um, People may be tired of seeking pleasure through material gain. Um, yes and no. You know, I, I, I think, um, I think in all honesty, everybody wants both. <laughs> you know, um, even folks that, that say that, ah, oh, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get in the rat race. I'm not gonna chase those things. Um, you know, given the chance, you know, if someone said, hey, I got a winning lottery ticket, you want it? You know, nine, you know. Nine times out of 10, somebody's going to say yes, and probably the one person that didn't will come back later and say, you know, maybe I'll take that thing. Um, you know, I mean, I, yes, I think, I think what, you know, ideal situation most people would tell you is they would rather fulfill purpose, and hopefully in doing so, it also helps their checking account, right? Uh, discussions of spirituality are no longer isolated in religious settings, but are part of current events in daily life. Um, again, that's kind of a little weird because, again, I know here in, in like this university as well as many other schools, there's kind of a no-no about talking about it. But again, it, if it's part of your life, it's hard not to, right? And, um, you know, we, we in all aspects, if you're if you believe in God or you believe in some higher power, anything you talk about below that, which would be everything that happens to us here and there, has some type of play into that, right? Um, so spirituality and religiosity. Um, so think of spirituality as having a vertical dimension, which involves a transcending relationship with the higher power. Um, and again, also involves a sense of purpose and meaning in life. Um, Religiosity would be your participation or adherence to a particular belief system and the practices of that belief system, right? So again, um, you know, there you can have folks that um, have that, and again, it, it's you know, you could look at any religion, and within that religion, you have some folks that definitely have better spirituality, 
and some folks that try to adhere more to the rules, right? So, so there's the, there's the religion, the religion part of it, which is like, you know, you're supposed to do this, 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 and this, right? And don't do this, 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 and this. And you have some folks that focus more on that, but really don't work on the vertical and the horizontal of like their purpose and meaning or how their relationship is with the higher power. Vice versa, you can have some folks that focus less on the religious part and focus more on the vertical and horizontal part. And then you can have some folks that are, you know, they, because of their vertical and because of their horizontal, they also adhere to the, you know, the, the, um, practices of the religion as well right and so there's all kinds of varying degrees of that depending on you know the religion the the person um so on and so forth um so um spiritual changes in undergraduate students religious engagement among students declines somewhat during college um again you know, um, a lot of times you may have students whose parents had them going to church or temple or whatever throughout their entire life. Now that they're on their own, they kind of want to do things on their own. So they may take more days off, so to speak, or they may venture out to see if there's something different, right? Um, students become more caring, um, more tolerant. Now, again, I would argue with that one. Um, caring, it depends on how you look at it. I'd say that, um, more passionate about things, but tolerance would be, um, I, I and I can say this from, with complete confidence with, uh, you know, younger students that I, I've been with. Um, I feel that, you know, we, we view tolerance sometimes as being like, um, I, you know, like I, we, I think sometimes it gets mixed up with like a liberal viewpoint and tolerance, right? Um, tolerance would be that you can listen, appreciate, and either agree or disagree with the liberal v viewpoint, but at that same time, um, be tolerant to a conservative viewpoint. So you can listen, agree, disagree, um, and, and be respectful on both accounts. That would be tolerant, right? Now, usually when people are tolerant, they're, they, they feel that, you know, they're either um, more, um, they feel that they're, that, you know, a more um, liberal viewpoint is always a more tolerant viewpoint which is not true because it's an opposite. So tolerance would be you're, you're somewhere in the middle. Now you can adhere from one side to the other. Like you may have more of a, 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 uh, a growth towards a liberal viewpoint or more of a growth towards a conservative viewpoint. But tolerance would be that of being able to listen and appreciate and, under, and try to understand those of different viewpoints than you. And I can say in today's society, that's not what we see. We see folks that feel that their viewpoint is right um, and some people believe that their viewpoint is the tolerant viewpoint, but they don't understand what tolerance is. Okay. So again, students think they're more tolerant, but I would actually argue the contrary to that one. All right. Um, and they more actively engage in spiritual quests. Um, yeah, again, yes or no. I, um, I, I don't know that more students do. I definitely see some students that are very engaged in that and some that are just kind of waiting to see what happens, right? Um, spiritual growth enhances other outcomes such as academic performance, psychological well-being, leadership development, and satisfactions with their college. Um, spiritual growth is enhanced by study abroad, interdisciplinary studies, and service learning. Engage in inner work through meditation, self-reflection, and or academic exploration. Um, so again, you know, um, a lot of folks that are spiritual want to see this world that they believe that a creator created. They want to learn about the different cultures created, the, the different people that come from these areas. They want to go improve communities, go help. You know, again, a lot of folks that are spiritual in, in their in either built into their spirituality or the religion that they follow, you know, um, 
service learning is huge. You know, giving back to communities, taking care of those that those that need help. Right. Um, again, working on your inner self. You know, through things such as meditation, prayer. You know, those those type of things. You know, reflecting on yourself. Are you growing in your spiritual reality? Are you growing as a person? You know, and again, how does your academic choice play into your spirituality, right? Um, spiritual growth is impeded by engagement in activities that distract from ordinary experiences of campus life, such as watching t TV, playing video games. Other things that will impede that is by participating in things that go against your spiritual beliefs, right? Um, so if you get in with a crowd that um, doesn't, you know, they do things that are in opposition of what you believe can also impede your growth as well, right? Um, so students views about spiritual and religious matters. Um, so secure, seeking, conflicted, not interested in doubting, right? So here's the percentages, right? So 42% feel secure, 50 or 23% feel like they're seeking, like they don't quite, you know, they may be on the right track, but they're looking, right? Conflicted. You know, they, they feel things, but then they see things differently. You know, 15 or percent are not interested and then doubting, you know, maybe what they grew up with isn't exactly what they, they think is right now or what they understand. Um, research on spirituality, key issues relate to research on spirituality. Um, definition of terms, placebo effect, and lifestyle variables are all things we'll go over. Um, so Native American perspective, man is like an island or circle with, within circles. Man is separated from these outer circles by his mind, his beliefs and limitations put upon him by life away from the earth. Um, beyond man's island of ego, his prison lays the spirit that moves in all things, the force that is found in all things, and the power of the pure mind is what makes all spiritual communication pure and unrestricted. Um, and the logical mind is a barrier or filter that lets lets all that pass through and and you put these things together, so to speak, right? So defining terms, spiritual health is not an exact science. Um, a, as terminology becomes standardized, studies on spirituality will yield more relevant applicable findings. Um, placebo power. Placebo describes the positive effects that are created when a person merely believes he or she will benefit from an intervention. About 35% of people are susceptible to placebos, right? So we see this again, especially in our field where people are given like a supplement and a placebo. And if people believe they're on the supplement, they perform better than they did on their pretests, right? Um, and it's just based on the belief. Um, so variables in religion, health, and lifestyle research. Alternative variables may determine results. So regular participation in religious activities and practices adds seven to 14 years to the lifespan. Again, this is based on correlation, so it's not correlation equals causation. Doesn't mean like, oh yeah, you just go to church more, you live more, right? Not that type of thing. There's a lot of layers to this in, in, in pass, okay? But much of this benefit comes from health-promoting practices of most religious groups. Um, again, most religious groups do not tell you to do things that are not healthy to your body, right? Mo you know, the, a lot of times what we know is good healthy practices also go hand in hand with religious practices, right? So um, great strides are being made in applying scientific research methods methodology to understanding the impact of spiritual and religious variables on health and stress management. All right. So we're bridging science and religion, right? Bridging science and spirituality. And, and again, they're not mutually exclusive, right? A lot of times people feel like, you know, you, you got to be either scientific or spiritual and it, you don't. Okay. Um, and again, in the psychological sciences, 
there's definitely an understanding of what spirituality plays into things, right? So five qualities of spiritual health as a sense of meaning and purpose of life. Again, we talked about how that's important, right? It gives you direction, you know, gives you, gives you a, a, a uh, light or a flashlight when things are dark, you know, to help light your way. It gives you a map, right? Um, faith in God or a higher power, however you choose to find it. Again, when you feel like you're, you're not the center of the universe, but some, something greater than you is, and that, that being gives you a purpose to do things, and that you're here, not by accident, but for a reason, it helps you to feel confident sometimes when things around you are kind of out of control, right? And it gives you a way to center yourself. And to know that, hey, you got to keep moving forward. I'm supposed to be here doing this. Feeling of connection to others and seeing oneself as a part of something bigger, right? So, again, you, you hear that. You, you hear that, you know, in a lot of religions, everybody's referred to as brothers and sisters, right? There, there's a feeling of connection, okay, and that you all work towards the same goal. Um, compassion for others. Most religions are built on the fact that you got to take care of those less fortunate than you. Um, and again, participation in religious behavior and meaning spiritual rituals helps you to grow closer, or, you know, to, to your God or deity or helps you to grow stronger spiritually. All right. Again, without purpose in life, we wander aimlessly. And again, our enthusiasm for life can be lost. Learning that even the most difficult times in life can bring meaning um, bring meaning can change the experience in a positive direction. Again, that, that's a big thing. A lot of times when you don't have any meaning in your life and you're going through really tough times that, you know, that that's a probably high potential time where people decide that life is not worth living anymore, where somebody that has a very high spiritual component looks, look at it as a growth time. You know, this is a time of growth. This is a time of being refined by fire. This is a time that, that my faith may be tested or, or however they want to look at it, right? And those who find meaning, even in their suffering, are able to find peace, right? Again, they feel like they're suffering for a reason. They feel that, hey, I'm here and I'm, 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 suffering, I'm suffering for God. I'm sorry, you know, however they look at it and they feel they find a purpose in that. Um, and again, even folks that have been through cancer or folks that have lost folks to cancer sometimes find peace, improved quality of life through those because they feel that, you know, there's a reason for that, right? That there's a reason that they went through that or that they experienced, you know, somebody's death through that. Faith, um, believe in a higher power is cornerstone of every major religion. It's the belief in our commitment to something or someone seen or unseen that helps a person realize their purpose in life and believing that we can re release to a higher power. Some of the things that are beyond our control relieve stress. Again, if things are out of control, but you think everything's out of control by chance, you don't know what's going to happen or, or you feel like there's, you know, like anything could happen when you have faith that somebody's in control. It's just not you and you feel that you're, you're on the path that they want you to be on, you have a greater sense of confidence that through the crisis, you're going to come out the other end, okay? So it gives you tranquility and security. And again, connectedness. You relate to others based on your beliefs. You have a relationship to them and to life in itself, you know, that, that you're all part of this greater story. Right? So then you feel harmony with others uh, in yourself and oneness with the universe and the elements of the universe. Because if we're all created by the same being, then we all, we have, there, we all have a purpose and, you know, with, with everything around us and, and our story. And there's a greater story being told. Uh, again, um, Two important qualities of compassion have special relevance to stress management. Forgiveness, experience the psychological peace that occurs when injured people transform their grievance against others. Again, um, you know, when you forgive somebody, it's not always that you're just forgiving them, you're forgiving yourself. And, and again, you're allowing yourself to let go of whatever, whatever they've done to you. And again, whatever they've done to you may be robbing you of joy, robbing you of peace. 
right? And so forgiving those, and again, we don't just forgive those that seek forgiveness, but when you forgive those that have done wrong to you and actually don't even care if you forgive them, again, it lets you let things go. And again, this is a practice in many religions, right? You know, they tell you, do not hold on to anger. Do not hold on to grievance. Altruism, the act of helping or giving to others without thought of self-benefit, random acts of kindness movement. Again, this, this is birthed out of the, you know, like there's a greater purpose. You should just take care of others, right? And, and if you get something out of it, you do, but that's not the, that's not the purpose. And if you don't, you, you get the satisfaction and know you, you did the right thing, right? Uh, namaste greeting um is comes from uh, i believe hindu religion um and it's the greeting is i honor the place and where you uh, place in you where the entire universe resides I honor the place in you where lies your love your light your truth your beauty i honor the place in you where if you are in that place if you are in that place in you and i am in that place in me then there is only one of us Right, so again, connectedness. Um, forgiveness factor. Studies using positron emission tomography shows that different parts of the brain are activated when contemplate forgiveness rather than revenge or retaliation. Um, and again, revenge and retaliation do not lead to inner peace, right? Um, the world of doing good. More than 60 million Americans are involved in volunteer efforts. We make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Winston Churchill. Um, again, what that saying is, you pay your bills by what you get, but you you make your life, and what what's important about your life is in who you are, is in what you give. Okay. Um, behaviors and rituals, religious behaviors and meaningful spiritual rituals so things such as prayer nature eco spirituality bring us closer together um, also bring us closer to the things created within the world okay and and also with our deity so prayer right gives you an open pathway of communication um uh randolph bird's research suggests intercessory prayer may improve health outcomes <laughs> um again um you know, this is one of those that it's going to be a hard one to, you know, like to really tease out um, because, again, you have to have faith in whatever is going on, right? So, you know, we always say that, you know, correlation does not equal causation. And again, in this one, it'd be really hard to, you know, like um, put all the puzzle pieces on this, right? Because there's so much that you don't see with the prayer. Um, but apparently, you know, when there is prayer as an intercessory, um, more people have favorable health outcomes than others, I guess. Um, so an action plan for stress management through spiritual wellness, define what spirituality means to you, reflect on the spiritual moments in your life, and based on your definition of spirituality, reflect on how, how spirituality re relates to the stress in your life. Students in prayer, 69% of college students say they pray, 61% pray at least weekly, 28% pray daily. They pray for loved ones, express gratitude, for forgiveness, and to help in solving problems. So the path to spiritual health is not prescribed. The right way is the one that works for you. So you've got to, you've got to figure out your belief system, all right? Um, you know, because you've got to believe in it. So if you follow something you don't believe, there's going to be inner conflict, right? So you've, you know, you really got to do your research. And if you see how important this is, it's not one of those things where you just get, you know, the dummy's guide to it and try to be, pick one of the, you know, like, I'm going to pick one of these religions, right? Um, so again, figuring out your spirituality is going to be very important to your, to your health in general. And again, it's going to help um, especially guide you during those times of, of crisis and also how to appreciate those times of prosperity, right? All right. That's it for chapter 10. Um, you have questions, comments, concerns, please text, email me, um, send me messages on 
blackboard and that's it stop and record